Welcome to Fiber by Design with Lydia and Sarah. I can't do that. I can't. <laughs> Today is not my day. Okay. Okay. You don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. Take five. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Fiber by Design. <laughs> my name is Sarah Stevens. You can find me as Sarah Stevens on Ravelry and Facebook, though I don't always add people on Facebook. Sometimes. And you can find me as Sarah Stevens11 on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. Fifth time's a charm. <laughs> I'm Lydia. You can find me as Lydia B on Ravelry. And then you can find me as Lydia Nitz on Instagram and Periscope. And we are the Indie Dyers behind Oloops, so you can find our um, Oloops group on Ravelry, and you should come on over and join if you haven't had a chance to yet. And then you can also find Sarah's design group on Ravelry. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's called Geekly U. Yep. It's for my designs and my blog. Yes. So, geeklyu.com as well. So, long introduction. Yeah. It took us a while. It did. <laughs> so, I guess jumping right in, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are you wearing? I am wearing a shawl that I designed. This is called I'll Be Seeing You, and it was one of the shawls from my Dream Girls collection. And this one was inspired by um, a quote from the notebook. It's from the letter that Noah writes to Allie that she reads at the very end of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it. It's a, it's a smaller one. It's more of a shawlette style. Um, but because it's a crescent shape, I still like the drape that it gets. Um, Especially and I, like the color. Yeah, it's it's very bright for me. It's more pink than I usually wear, but I think because it has the little pops of the purple, and it has a ton of that really bright coral, um, it can go okay in my wardrobe because I do have corally colored things. I like so it. My my middle daughter Jillian is the one modeling it in the picture on my pattern page, and she she really likes it. But it is a crescent shaped shawl. Um, and it has just a really simple little lace detail at the bottom. And I knit this with our um, three ply ultra in the Awakens the Soul colorway. And that is, um, it's 100% merino, but it has 490 yards. It's, it is a fingering weight. And the pattern um, recommends that you knit it on a US size 6 for my mirror, which is what I did. You can find that in your design group, right? Or in your design page. Yes, on my on design, design page. page. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then on my feet, I'm wearing mm -hmm. my short sheep U socks. And they are by Audrey Bakatin, I think is how you pronounce her last name. It's B-O-C-H-A-A-N-T-I-N, -A -A excuse me. And I knit these. These were the, I think, second pair of socks I ever made. Mm -hmm. And I really love the short sheep pattern. So easily memorized, mm -hmm. it which is. is one of my favorite reasons. Well, and it's to a knit good. It. I think it's a good beginner sock pattern because it is so easy to memorize that to me, I feel like it's a good like intermediate sock. Like after you've figured out how to knit a sock, right? This yeah. is like the first pattern sock to try. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, and I knit this with um, a skein of Oloops. It was our Oloops Platinum, and it was the I Love You More Than Pickles, Macaroni, and Cheese, and Sweets. Coloring. And I know that's a really bizarre name, but it's yellow and green and pink, and that's just kind of what it made me think of. So that's what it got into. <laughs> yep, I love you more than pickles, mac and cheese, and sweets. Mm -hmm. That's funny. I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember when we named it that. Yes. But nobody else got that colorway but you. No, it's just me. Because, yeah. Because I stole it. She <laughs> stole it right away. I did. <laughs> right away. Okay. What you're wearing? What am I wearing? I am wearing today on my feet my socks that I knit for um, Socks Ed. Socks Ed. I was going to say Socks 101, but that wasn't right. Socks Ed. Last beginning of the summer, last spring, maybe? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I think so. Ish. Spring ish. Mm -hmm. And these are the. From, uh, from Stacy of Mustache Sheep, we are podcasting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Let me just throw that out there because I have been tongue-tied all morning long. 
I am obviously not the morning person that can function at 8 a.m. <laughs> okay, so these are my Stacy of Mustache yarns, and it's the Karma Sutra colorway, and it is a lot of stripes. I think there's 24 colors in this stripe pattern. And then I'm wearing around my neck my newest shawl design. This is 74. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but we're doing a knit along with it, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And it's knit out of DK weight yarn. I used two and a half skeins of Madeline Tosh DK to knit this. And Madeline Tosh is 225 yards. So 225. That's 450, 575 ish skeins of or yards of yarn is about what you need to knit this shawl of DK weight. Yeah. So, not terrible, really. Uh, most, most DK weight skeins you could possibly eke out, like you might be playing yarn chicken at the end for two skeins. That's what I'm going to be doing with my hazelnuts one that I'll show you later. I'm going to be playing yarn chicken. But that's okay. So, that's what I'm wearing today. Okay, I have the whip I'm working on. Here we go. <laughs> I'm working on my, I'm almost done with this row. I'm working on my Featherweight Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. I am using Three Irish Girls Adorn in the Little Black Rain Cloud colorway. And I am knitting this on my U.S. size 2's 2.75 millimeter needles. And the last time you guys, I haven't gotten much progress. Last time I showed you I was here, now I'm here, so maybe two inches of work. Not a whole lot. I'm loving it. I've already split for my sleeves. And... I've already split for my sleeves, so I'm quite a ways down. Mm -hmm. I've got a long ways to go, but it's plugging away. It's miles of endless stockinette, and so for me, the knitting and the purling and the knitting and the purling, which is funny because I like to whiz through vanilla socks, but it's not knitting and then purling. Yeah. Um, it takes me a while so I have to set myself like marker goals like that's what my second marker is for actually I get to move it when I've hit 10 rows and then I'll clip it again and then when then I know I have 10 more rows to knit <laughs> so I'm really liking it I've been teaching a class on it and we're supposed to meet up for this class again in four days and I'm supposed to be done with the body of this that's not gonna happen obviously because I wanted to show them what the FO would be while they're finishing their ribbing, so. But that's okay. If I can just get a little bit farther, then I'll be fine. We can still talk about picking up sleeves at that point. Mm -hmm. No biggie. But. I really like the way it's knitting. So Me I'm too. I'm excited for you to get it done so you can wear it. Me too. It's this really great washed over purple color. It's a grayish purple. What's your first whip? Um... In my awesome mustache bag that has the really cool argyle fabric on the inside. Last week I had showed you guys the um, Guinness skein that I got. And I got cast on to the Cabernet hat. And I have to apologize. Last week, everything <laughs> I told you was complete lies. All of it. I didn't do any of the things I said I was going to do. I didn't make any of the patterns I said I was going to make, aside from this one. But I told you the name of the designer for this, at the, but that was not right. This is not designed by Joji. This is actually by Monica Cerna, and it is the Cabernet. I will show you guys a picture of what it looks like, because it is beautiful, and I can't wait to get it done. So this is what the hat looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hopefully you can. And I have done the first little repeat of the cable, which is these beautiful, like, I don't know, circly cross things. 
I love it. Yeah. I've been wanting to knit this hat for forever. This will be my second one. I made one two years ago, I think, for my niece. I made her a purple one and gave it to her as her birthday present. And I loved the finished project. And since then, I've been wanting to make one for myself. And I loved the Skinnest colorway. And when I was when I got it on the worsted, um, I knew instantly that that's what it would be. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. golden. Is that like a golden rod? I don't know. It, it kind of it yeah. Basic. It fits the mm -hmm. the Guinness description perfectly. Yes. Yeah. I love that colorway. So that's where I'm at with that, and I'm really liking the way it's turning out. Um, and it does call for you to knit the hat on, I believe, a U.S. size 6. I am actually using my Haya Haya U.S. 7s, which are a 4.5 millimeter, because I am a very tight knitter. And it does actually say in the pattern that if your gauge is tighter, that she recommends going up a size. So that's exactly what I did. So I'm knitting mine on a 7, and I'm getting the gauge that she calls for. And I'm really liking the way the fabric is knitting up. It also recommends that you, or tells you to knit the brim, I believe, on a US size 3. I did not do that. I did mine on a 5. I don't like how tight the garter brim is on a 3, so I didn't do that. Mine's on a 5. Because you like that. yours more slouchy. Yes, much more. So, that's my first, and I'm very happy with that. It should, it doesn't take very long. Um, once you get into the pattern, so hopefully I should have that done next time, so you guys can see it all finished. That is my first one. Making me want to knit that right now. You should. It's no, a cool hat. It's not in my list of things. Okay, then you should. I have to wait. I have to wait. Yes, I understand. I have guidelines, <laughs> and I ignored some of my guidelines. Clearly, I am. Um, so my second whip is I went ahead and cast onto a second 74, and I am absolutely loving this. I don't know if you can see the purple. That's so pretty. This is knit, knitting up beautifully. It is Hazelnut's DK, the Lively DK in the Violetta colorway. It's 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon approximately 275 yards. So that's why I said I'm going to be playing some yarn chicken. No, because I need about more. 575 yards is what I was determining. And I will only, only have, have I only have two got skeins. it. I'm like no cuz so, there's more yardage. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, so I got it. So I only have 500 and what? 25 yards? Yeah. No. 550 yards. So I'm 25 so, yards yeah. short of what. It'll probably be okay. So I might be playing yarn chicken. We'll see. Otherwise, I don't. I don't know what I'll do. I might buy another skein. I don't know. Or I might just bind off in a really cool other DK skein, and just have the lace be a different color. That we'll improvise. That could be pretty. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm working on right now. If you have this in DK. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Mm -hmm. Actually, I could just use that in DK because I could just hold it okay. double. I'm housing this in my freckled whimsy bag. It's my my little winter birds bag. This is the sock nanny size, and she always does the interior fabric the same as the little handle pull. And I'm also knitting these out on my high high US size fives, and um. I'm loving it. So, once again, this pattern is available in my on my Rav design page, and we'll talk about more of the design stuff um, in the knit along portion. But that's the only thing that I have going left in this in this segment that isn't socks, since I already tried to. Botch Operation Sock Drawer once. I won't try and do it again. <laughs> okay, so I have two more things. I had... When Sarah and I were sitting here last week, we were looking at the rainbow yarn that we dyed for the rainbow along with Diane, and we had made the comment that we thought we should knit them into the Sunbeam Shawl. 
It didn't do that. It changed yeah, my I mind. didn't either. And she didn't either. <clears throat> so I am now making. This week. I am making the Lalo shawl by Shannon Cook. I and love. I love this all pattern. Of Shannon Cook's design. Oh, me too. Um. I, yes, I love her. I love her stuff. I love this pattern. I'm really happy with the way it's knitting up. It's one of my favorites. For a long time. For a really long time. And it's one of those, like, I swear, there are so many patterns in my favorites and in my queue, I will never knit them all. No. Never. It's just not good. We need to grow an extra set of arms. Yes. We do. And I am, through just a couple of the repeats of this, I decided to use the After the Storm colorway as the lighter middle section, so that part where hers is kind of the golden brown. And I'm really liking the way it's knitting up. I think the little you pops of color. You can't see the detail as much on the pattern for the way that the shawl is mm -hmm. the difference between just the basic garter and then that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. It is very cool. And it wasn't actually until I purchased the pattern and looked at the pictures more in depth that I even realized this textured section was there. Yeah. I didn't notice that. I thought that this textured section was everywhere. I didn't realize that it was oh, separated yeah. with a garter mm -hmm. section. Yes. So, and then I will put the stormy skies on the bottom. So where hers is the blue on the bottom, mine will also be blue. And I am knitting this on my U.S. size 4, 3.7 millimeter, excuse me, 3.5 millimeter Knit Fix Harmony Circular Needles. I believe... Her pattern calls for a U.S. size 3, and I went up, and I am getting naked that way. And then I have this in my beautiful little Parisian bag that my friend Melissa made for me. And I've had this in my armoire in my office, and I have a bar of wool wash soap that I was also gifted in that same thing. So it all smells like that now. Oh, I like that smell. <laughs> I am very, very happy with this knit. It's very enjoyable. It's easy to memorize. I love the way the yarn is knitting up. I'm excited to get a little further into it, and I'm excited for the finished product. I'm excited. And I should very much be able to finish it in time for the end of February. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be able to get the cast on of mine soon, but... And you decided not to do this on either, correct? Yeah, I'm, I don't even know if I can pull it up. I didn't even think about pulling it up in time. But the one that I'm, I'm not even going to try. The one that I'm going to knit, it's an asymmetrical type shawl, but it's knit from the bottom up. And half of it is one color, and then the border on one side is another color. But it, you knit them at the same time. So, that's what I'm going to knit. That'll be a fun construction. I know. I'm super excited by it. My last whip for this section is in this beautiful basket that my friend Amy gave me in my swap. And I am knitting my 74 shawl, designed by Sarah. I'm not very far. I've only gotten through three repeats, but I love every single thing about it. I love the pattern. I love how my yarn is knitting up. I just kind of want to wear it just like this right now. And I am knitting it on my U.S. Um, size sixes. So I went up again. Yeah. Because you're doing yours on fives, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I went up again. Um, U.S. size six, four millimeter, high, high sharps. And I, like I said last week, it needs to be knit in all the things. I'm truly just very much obsessed with it. And I won't be playing yarn chicken because I am using the O Loops DK, which is 250 yards. So I will have plenty because I do have three skeins. And I'm using the Jazz Club colorway that I dyed. And I really like it. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. I should hopefully even maybe have enough left over to do a pair of fingerless gloves for my husband, which he's kind of excited about because he really likes his colorway. So we will see. We will see how much I have left at the end. 
Yeah, I like how it's kind of like a denim mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like the, the, the like the toffee, this. yeah, that kind of comes through. That it's funny. Right there. I can see it's more olive green. You know, it's funny. It In some sections it looks olive, and then other sections it has this funny, like, almost honey color to it. So, I don't know. Likes it. Me too. Um, okay, these guys are done. Yay! And you guys, thank you for all of the encouragement to cut in my heels for Afterthought Heels. While I didn't do it for this one, and I explained in the last one how I was irritated that I placed my lifeline in the wrong spot, it doesn't look terrible. Like, I don't even think you can notice. No. I don't know. So, I knit these. These were... This was yarn that came in a kit with Suburban Stitcher, um, Diane of Suburban Stitcher Bags, and Stacy of Mustache Yarns, and Vanessa of Vintage Rose, and we got these sweet little bags with it. This skein of MCN and Stitch Markers with a little progress keeper. Mm -hmm. And I knit these guys toe up in just my basic a basic vanilla sock with an afterthought heel. These heels I did put in lifelines, but I've decided that the next socks that I make, I am going to go ahead and cut the yarn. I watched, somebody referred me to the Kirby Worby video on how to cut in your afterthought heels, and the biggest complaint that I have about afterthought heels is that you have to pick up extra stitches along the side right here or else you get holes. You get teeny tiny little holes. And it's not that big of a deal. Like you can see, I obviously didn't pick up the appropriate one here. But over here I did much better and it's very, very clean. Well, the way that she does this video, she shows you how to cut in your afterthought heel and have absolutely no gaps. It looks really easy. So, I've picked out my new stripy skein of yarn, and I'm prepared to use my coloring book yarn, and I'm going to try it. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. But these guys are the basic recipe for me. I cast on toe up using my US size 0 Haya Haya 2.0 millimeter needles, and I knit for 65 rounds. I placed my lifeline. I knit for 65. Well, not 65, 75, I think, because... I knit the three full repeats, almost, and then I did the red cuff. So, I like it. I'm really enjoying these. I love them. They're really comfortable, and they're oh so soft. And I believe it's an 80-10-10. 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. In the gumdrop wonderland colorway. They're awesome. So those are my only FOs. Do you have other Operation Fletcher? I only have one. I have none, so... Oh! I thought you had some. Well, I, so I'm... I brought my green sock just so I could knit on it so I would have something that I didn't have to pay to. But I haven't gotten any more progress on my socks this week. Oh. I haven't worked on any of them. Okay. So... I, for whatever reason, I was thinking you. No, uh-uh. I want to. I want to have them. I had every intention of trying to have one more sock done, but I got sucked down the cast-on rabbit hole, so... Stop it. Okay. So, in my Silver Shed bag, oops, gosh, I'm throwing things now, it's cute little sock monkeys, inside is the cute little buttons, I'm housing my other socks, so, a couple episodes ago, I finished this guy, and this is a new sock pattern that I'm just going to go ahead and write up because it's a modified pinstripe and I haven't decided what I'm going to name it it just might be modified pinstripe because that's what I keep calling it and I knit this out of Dana of Unwind Yarn Company's yarn and this is the trunkless elephant colorway and the cuff is in some hazelnut scraps that I have so I got cast on to the second sock and I'm almost maybe 12 rows now 
until I can get cast on to the heel or increase for the heel and I am going to have plenty of yarn. I'm going to have so much left over. Uh, yeah. I love this yarn and I do have quite a bit of the gray left. So that is my sock that I've been working on. I got this got cast on last night and plugged at it, away at it for a little while while uh, watching reruns of podcasts. Yes. So that's my only... You stab yourself? Oh, like repeatedly <laughs> since yesterday. Mm. When they say they're sharps, they don't lie. They don't lie. I am knitting these guys on my Haya Haya US size 0 2.0 millimeter needle. These are my higher highest sharps on my 32 inch cable. I prefer 24 inch cable, but 32 is working because that's what I had open. And they're flying by, which is great. Hoping that these guys will be done by the next episode and I will have my green socks cast on and then I can officially start working on other socks. The last one that I have going is a half object ish so I this is before I made the decision and watched the Kirby Werby video so but I've got one tube done with my afterthought heel line placed and actually I was thinking I don't know I'm debating on whether or not I want to place an afterthought like a lifeline here on the second tube or if I want to try it on the second tube so I can have a comparison like this sock was knit using a lifeline and this sock was knit cutting in my heels just so I could show them to you I haven't decided yet but I knit these guys on the on my US size ones they were my Addy Turbo laces and this is knitted with I think this is her victory sock yarn in the witch's brew colorway. I guess I should show you better up close. And I love how bright these socks are. Mm. I think they're I think they're awesome. Yeah, I like them. They're gonna be really cozy and they're really thick. Mm -hmm. Like they're more like boot socks for me, but they're short. So that's it. That's my last one. So hopefully either this one, either the second one of this one or the second green one will be cast on for the next time. It's kind of my game plan. I really, there are so many things that I want to knit that I want to get some things off my needles. So. Very nice. Yeah. No, I didn't cast on a single knitting bucket list thing at all. So I had said to you all that I wanted to have my Advent calendar shawl cast off mm -hmm. before I cast on to my bulky waist sweater. And it's kind of still my plan. That's right. I remember that. But I might revamp my plan a little bit. I might try and knit on my Advent calendar shawl a little bit each week and still cast on to my bulky weight sweater, but either way I'm not casting on to my bulky weight sweater until at least one more pair of socks is done and my 74 is done. So I just, I worry that I will put too many things on my needles and mm -hmm. then I will get sidetracked and mm -hmm. not finish them. And yeah. I want to finish them. Yeah. I want to have those finished products. Yes. So. I totally understand that. No bucket lists. I did get cast on. It is not, however, the one that I told you guys I was going to cast on. But it is in my beautiful peacock bag from The Girl with the Rabbit, who you can find on Etsy. And I had said last week that I wanted to have my first knitting bucket thing be my Lucy hat. That did not happen. And it's because I'm still having the same issue with the Lucy hat that I've had for the last two years that I've wanted to knit it. I truly want it to almost look exactly like the one in the picture. I want it to be the gray with, I think, a darker, possibly burgundy or plum colored stripe. I don't have those in my my stash of semi-solids at the moment. 
nor did I want to go and spend the money to get them. Because I think it's going to have to be Madeline Tosh, because that's what the pattern is. Um, so I think, you know, I'm just going to have to wait. Yeah. So instead, I got cast on to the Robin Hood hat, and this is by Grace Akram. And I am using the Olips Worsted Hen House colorway. And the construction of this hat is still one that I can't completely wrap my brain around, so I'm having a hard time with that. See, it looks tiny, right? But Sarah has made it, and she says it all works out, so I'm just going to go with it. But this is how far I've gotten so far. I've done all of the increases for the top of the hat, and I'm just now knitting. You have to knit so far until you can do the brim, because you work this hat from the top down. So... But I'm loving this colorway. I told Sarah yesterday, I called her, or texted her actually, and said, you need to dye me a sweater's worth of this colorway. I like the colorway too. Me too. And I am using my US size 8 KAs, which are my bamboos. I haven't used these in forever, and they... I forget how sticky bamboo can be sometimes. Because I know I'm using the Knit Picks Harmonies for my other shawl, but they're not, they're not, they're as, not sticky. as sticky. So that has been kind of a nuisance. But I am enjoying the knit. I, I wish that I could take the KA swivel join and implant it in my Haya Haya sharp needle. I love the swivel mm -hmm. join in KAs. If mm -hmm. you enjoy bamboo needles or wooden needles of any sort, they are by far my favorite. I no longer knit with them because they don't slide off my needles as fast. Mm -hmm. And that, it actually, it hurts my hand because I feel like I have to stop mm -hmm. and push it as mm -hmm. way more than normal. But me too. I love that swivel joint. And I noticed for me that my Genius. stitch, my stitches aren't as even all the way around because you always, to me it always seems like the last one mm -hmm. on the needle is way tighter. Yeah. And so then you're shoving it over the end of the needle, which always frustrates me. But either way, nothing to do with the pattern. I'm loving the pattern. I'm loving the way the yarn is knitting up. And I am almost through with the top part of the hat, so I will be able to pick up for the brim here shortly. So I should hopefully be able to have this hat done maybe for you guys next time as well. And that is on my knitting bucket list. So I at least will have one of my bucket list items done and that makes me happy because I have wanted to knit this pattern for a long time now. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. But those are all of my projects this week. It's all mine. Oh. I don't have very many either. Yeah. But you know, I, I've decided I think that's okay though. For a while, I was like, I have to have stuff all the time. I have to have something new. And I've just decided that I don't necessarily feel that way. Of trying to complete one of my old whips. I had said every week, and then Sarah's like, well, maybe it's every other week. And I think for me, I've decided, I think it's just going to be one a month. Yeah. I think I, have, I think I have six, maybe seven. It's not bad. Which isn't bad. So even if I'm completing one a month, if you're still ending this... Starting the summer with nothing. Exactly. That would be good. So that's kind of my goal. I want to try to get all of those old projects that have been cast on finished because I do like them. There are some that I gave up on and knew that I just wouldn't complete and got rid of. And I think that's okay. The hardest one for me was I was about where Sarah is on her sweater right now on the sweater I started two years ago. And I had to take the needles out of it to cast on to my 74. Mm -hmm. That was really hard, because I hadn't worked on it in a long time, and I knew I was going to take it out, but I had never actually pulled the needles out of it. It was still there. It was like, well, if I decide I want to make it, I can, and I'm just not going to. I'm not loving the yarn and the pattern together anymore, nor do I think it's the size that I wanted it, so I pulled it out. So. See, and for me, like February, this is going to sound funny, but February is always like my house cleaning mm -hmm. month for all of my knitting projects. So for me, I always go through all of my projects and I either finish them, I, I decide to finish them, or I frog them. And it's been like that for me forever. Finish it or frog it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, it doesn't 
bother me as much to frog a project because I figure if it's been on there for a year now, clearly not working. I'm on clearly it. not going to knit on it anymore right. unless it's that I'm knitting on it over that year and it's just a big project. But most of the time, it's not that case at all. It's just that I have fallen out of love and with, with it, and the pattern no longer works with the yarn, mm -hmm. or I'm ready for a change. Right. Or maybe my style has changed. Right. Exactly. So, yes, I get it. It is hard when you first rip it out, though. It is. But after a while, it gets a little... Well, I think for me, part of it is that when I first dyed the yarn, I loved the way the yarn turned out. It was a little lighter than I had originally envisioned in my head. I still love it. I love the way it was knitting up. But shortly after casting onto it, I purchased a, a cardigan that is very similar in style to the one I was making that's almost the exact same color. Yep. And so it kind of became one of those, well, I already have that, so now I don't know that I'm 100% in love with it, nor did I really care for the way it was fitting. So I, I think I would just rather use it for a different pattern, and possibly not even a sweater. There's a shawl I really want to make that calls for three skeins of fingering weight, and so I'm kind of determining whether or not I want to turn it into that. So, we'll see. That would be pretty mm -hmm. if it's the same pattern, I think. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of. Mm -hmm. So, but that's, yeah. that's why I'm at <laughs> with that. I get so. it. It's hard. Yes. I have, I have a few projects on the needles that I just need to finish, but my biggest problem is ripping out. I go through this phase, like I'll start designing something and I'll get halfway or two thirds of the way through it and then I stop on it for a while for mm -hmm. some reason or another and then when I come back to it I inevitably go I don't really love it like that Yeah. and then I rip it out. So I've spent all of that design time on something that never becomes anything. That's usually the one that frustrates mm -hmm. me the most. Yeah. That happens all the time. Or I'll complete the project and I'll get it done and I'm like, I really don't like that. That's not my thing. Yeah. Why did I make that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Too. So, um, I don't have my notebook that tells us what our sections are. Um, so did you have anything that you wanted to talk about specifically in the design portion? Or do you want to just talk about it no. and then knit along with us? Just the knit along with us section. Okay. Do you think that's our next thing then? Okay. Perfect. Knit along with us. So why don't we talk about this one first? Why don't we talk about yours? Okay, so for we well, okay, for the year, we decided that we are going to do a couple casual knit along, six actually, throughout the course of the year, and there'll be two month long segments. And we were gonna focus on both of our designs. And so for the months of January and February, we are knitting the 74 designed by me and there are a couple places that you can enter mm -hmm. you oh, and chat at the same time so you can enter in the O loops group on Ravelry as well as the geekly you group on Ravelry and like I said it's very casual mm -hmm. we're just chatting and posting progress pictures and when you complete one we'll post it and then Lydia and I are going to at the end of February the last day it might be March 1st or March 2nd, I don't know, we'll pull all of the FOs and this time you are, um, we're going to take yarn from our stash and let you pick one of three different skeins that you would like. Mm -hmm. So we'll draw a winner from the FOs and it's just going to be fun and casual and not, there aren't really any rules other than just, you know, have fun, mm -hmm. chat. And no along with us with that one. Yeah. And then we're also participating in the Rainbow Along. We are. With Diane of Suburban Stitcher. Mm -hmm. And the rules for that one are you have to be a member of her group. You have to finish a your knit by the end of the month of February's over. It you can enter whips. Like you can start with whips. You can even finish February 1st. Mm -hmm. And you're fine. And the only rules are is that you knit with, the only other rules are that you knit with rainbow yarn or rainbow 
uh, fiber that you have spun up and or one of the rainbow yarns from the three designated di dyers mm -hmm. and we're one of them mm -hmm. so I think that's it right I think those are all the rules I believe so yes yeah I do think I think you have to be a member of Diane's group yeah so that one and that one's starting in February so Lydia's yes. already cast onto hers yes. you guys got to see it I haven't cast onto mine yet I'm really excited about that one mm -hmm. um there are a couple other knit alongs going on that I'm considering participating in. I am participating. I did cast on on Christmas Eve with Little Bobbins Knits with my socks. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have those going. I'm also going to, if I get them done in the month of January, which is my hope, the Bakery Bears podcast is doing their Cozy Tozies mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. And you could enter current socks as long as they weren't more than 50% done. So because I haven't gotten anywhere near 50% done on those. I figured if I got them done, I would enter them into the Cozy Tozies with the Bakery Bears. Such a cute name. I know, I like that name. I thought it was cute. <laughs> and then Eric of the Sticks Plus Twine podcast is doing a men's accessory knit along mm -hmm. that started on January 1st. And I'm hoping to participate in that as well. I believe it goes through February. Does it go through February? I think, I think it goes so. through February. Um, and you need to knit two men's accessories. So you can do like a hat and a scarf or um, gloves. Hats. And yeah. If you knit a pair of socks, he says that that is only being counted as one project. So you would have to knit a pair of socks and something else. I would like to make my husband another big head hat. And then if I have the yarn left over from the 74, I'm going to make him the gloves. So I figure I'll be knitting those things anyway. That's perfect. So I was going to enter into Eric's. I don't have any manly knits going on the needles anytime soon, so I can't participate. Yeah, I made my husband the bankhead hat last year, but I played yarn chicken, so it's shorter than it was supposed to be. And he likes it because he, he likes them short and beanie style anyway, but to me it just it seems like it needs to be a little bit longer. A little bit. So I want to make him another one that's the actual size. Mm-hmm. Men's knits take just a little bit more yarn always, mm -hmm. just because their feet are just a smidge bigger. Mm -hmm. Their heads are just a smidge bigger. Yes. And then did you want to talk about the things that we're going to be doing in the group in February and March? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in February, we're calling February in the Oloops group the um, favorite fiber friends. So we will be having a casual knit along in February that kind of runs in incongruently with the 74 mm -hmm. and you can knit any pattern any sock any shawl any hat anything you want as long as it's either designed by one of your favorite fibery friends so if Jane Richmond is your favorite knitwear designer you can design something or you can knit something by her um, if you're knitting Sarah 74 and you don't have it finished you can enter that, that as your project or if you don't have a favorite designer you can knit something out of your favorite indie dyer yarn. Um, so yep. it could be ours, it could be hazelnuts, it could be spun right round. Just casual, something simple. Yep. And again, prizes for that will be drawn at the end of the month mm -hmm. of February. That one's just going to be a one month thing. And we will... No, excuse me, it's going to be two months, right? I no, think it, was it was just one month. month. Yeah, it is just, just for, for February. February. And we will pull yarn from our stash and you'll get to choose that. So just fun and simple. And then March. And March is super exciting too. <laughs> so there's going to be some openings on the 15th. We're going to mm -hmm. open up a thread, and if you want to join in, you can. The 15th of January. Oh, yeah. 15th of January. And we decided that in March, we wanted to do a mystery yarn ball swap. Mm -hmm. And so we will have a thread open from January 15th until the end of January. You'll receive your partner February 1st. And that gives you an entire month to get them the perfect skein of yarn. And mystery yarn balls work where you start with something and you wrap the yarn around it until it's gone for a while and then you add something else new into it and wrap it in there. So as they knit, 
their goodies fall out of it. So it's kind of really fun. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a small questionnaire to fill out. So that way we're pairing people up with their favorite yarn choices that are similar. So if my favorite, we're going to give you options. If some of my favorite yarns are, say, you know, hazelnuts and O loops and three Irish girls and things like that, we're not going to pair me up with somebody whose favorite yarns are maybe Cascade. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and keep them at similar price points. Mm -hmm. So everybody's swapping equally. Right. And that's how we'll divide you all up. And then in addition to that little piece of it, in March, Lydia and I are both coming out with a mystery pattern. Mm -hmm. And they'll be available for a dollar. And if you want to knit along in March with us with one of the mystery patterns, then you can. Yes. And you can choose to use your mystery cake yarn that you got. You can choose not to. Mm -hmm. It's totally up to you. Yes. So I'm super excited about March. <laughs> so excited about March. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about it since we had decided that we were going to do this. Yeah, it'll be fun. I had dreams about it. Yeah, it'll be fun. And it'll then as well in March, so we'll have the the little mystery knit alongs, and then that month we will start a new two month knit along, and we, which will run March and April, and we are going yep. to knit my looking at Herschel. So we're giving you lots of notice yes. ahead of time. So if you have planning that you want to do, if that's something that you want to participate in, then you know, okay, I really want to knit Lydia's shawl, so I'm going to pull my yarn now, or make sure I grab my pattern. At that point right yes. yep. and there will be threads in the group we'll probably have two threads for each thing so one that could be a chatter thread and one that's just an fo thread because it's easier for Sarah and I to just pull from an fo thread that doesn't have chatter mm -hmm. except for the two-month one do you yeah. care about that one no I don't care about that one that, that one's one just be. fun yeah yeah so but yeah those will start happening here soon so like Sarah said, on the 15th of January, we will have sign-ups for the mystery cake swap. So if that is something that you're interested in, you'll just need to have that filled out. Mm -hmm. We will have, we'll leave it up for pro until probably the 25th, I would think, maybe the 30th. I say we leave it up until the end of January, and then on February 1st, we'll just start okay. and pairing well, yeah. people up. So that way you have a good two weeks. Yeah, and then you would be assigned your partner no later than February 2nd we would assume probably on the first but no later yeah. than that so that you have the month because if possible we would like for your partner to have their magic yarn ball by March 1st yeah so but that gives you a whole month to make that happen right and chances are you'll have something in your stash that will mm -hmm. fit your partner's yes likes yes yes You know, Mark's Madness, do you have any? I have none. I have one. I have none. I have one. And it was a gift from my husband for Christmas slash birthday. P.S. Today is her birthday. <laughs> it is. So I have other oh, matching. I didn't realize they were the same. Mm -hmm. So I have a Lazy Susan yarn caddy as well now. Mm -hmm. from Wrap and Turn, and I love it. I was laughing the very first night when I was using it because my yarn kind of got stuck underneath like this, and I went to pull it, and it pulled the whole thing off my table. But I was really <laughs> happy because usually when my yarn falls off of the table onto the floor, it rolls underneath my couch, and I have to get something and get it out from underneath there, and I didn't have to do that. It just fell right off onto the floor and stayed right like it was. <laughs> I love mine because I take my rings off when I knit, mm -hmm. and so I can leave all my rings on the little thing, and I know exactly where they are. Yeah. That's one of my favorite features. Yes. I do love all of the other things about it, but yes. that one is kind of like your favorite. my favorite thing. <laughs> yes. I'm loving it. I love, I love how easy it is to use your yarn from the outside of the cake when it's on this. Yeah. I was, I had this on there last night, and I'm using my yarn from the outside for my Cabernet hat, but it's just in my bag, and that's driving me crazy. 
Yeah. So I will probably have to just take this off while I'm not working on it and put my which is really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes right off. See, I just really haven't easy. taken mine off because this is like <laughs> my my at my desk <laughs> project. <laughs> yes. So I don't. Right. So, but I do love it. I'm very happy. He, it was so sweet. He was editing the podcast when Sarah was talking about hers and I had made the comment that I would really love to have one. And he, I get, he was in, he was in the other room when he was doing it. And so he instantly paused it, went and found the shop on Etsy, ordered me one and then sends me this text message. Cause I'm in the other room and he's like, I just ordered something for you, but it won't be here until closer till your birthday. So it's kind of Christmas and birthday. And it was just really cute. And so I thought that was really sweet that he did that because he knew I wanted one. Well, and the best part was is you had no idea. No. None whatsoever. A lot of times you find out. Yeah. No. Yeah. What it could be <laughs> or you're like, I think it might be this. He's trying to be really sneaky. Yeah. He was so disappointed. So my poor husband, we have this funny, every single year that we've been together, he somehow manages to purchase something for himself or multiple things for himself that I have gotten him for Christmas. And without fail, every year, one of the presents I buy him, he'll buy for himself shortly before Christmas. He did it this year, too. Two of the things I bought him, he purchased. But he has the hardest time keeping things a secret for me. Not because I'm one of those, like, snoopy people. I'm not. I don't want to know what I get until I open it. I like the excitement of opening it. But without fail, every year, something that he has purchased for me, like, shows up at the house not wrapped. Like, a couple years ago, he bought me. So at our house, we... The people who owned the house before my grandmother, um, who is who we bought the house from, when they remodeled, they took the fireplace out and left all of the chimney and stuff in the wall. So our house no longer has a fireplace. And that's something I really love. I love having a fireplace. I love the coziness of it. So he bought me a firebox. And eventually the plan is to actually build a whole mantle and stuff around this firebox. We just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So we just have, it's just a freestanding firebox. Well, he was so excited. He had, you know, he got together with my parents and um, my mom, like, had my mom purchase it so there would be no way of me seeing it and gave her the money and blah, 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 blah. So it was supposed to be delivered. He had made every, you know, he had done everything he possibly could to make sure that this wasn't going to be delivered when I would be home or that it would be all covered up when I was... Well, it gets delivered to my house, and on the side of the box, there's a giant picture of what it is, and it says, electric fireplace. He was so disappointed and upset that I knew what it was, because it was my big present, and he was just, it was very upset. So, so it was really cool that this year, I had no idea what any of my presents were. No, and he did really good. And he did a great job, so, yeah. But, that was kind of a tangent, sorry. <laughs> just a good fun little that. stories, but... So the first thing is, I decided this year that I was going to be intentional intentional about what I was doing, what I was doing all year long. And everybody has words that they're coming up with, and everybody keeps picking them, and... I have one. <laughs> what is your word? My word is balance. So that's a good one. Yes, because I've noticed that, like Sarah and I were talking, I spend... I have so many different outlets in my life, you know, designer, indie dyer, podcaster, mm -hmm. mother, nanny, homeschooler, you know, and I feel like I don't always get to spend as much time and effort on all of the things because there are all of the things. Right. And so I wanted this year to really be able to focus on making sure that there is a balance and that I am really striving to do everything in moderation. Me too. So. I I That's couldn't my word. find a word for me. So we were on the phone the other night, and I was like, I need, like, one that's just a perfect word for me. And it's like, it needs to be, like, Sarahism or something. Because I need to be able to do all of the things I want to do when I want to do them and allow myself to start new things or allow myself to quit things that I no longer want to do anymore. And I couldn't find the right word for it. Mm -hmm. But something that's going to allow me to do that through the year is that I decided that every day each month I was going to pick something and I wrote a little bit about this on my blog uh, thegeeklyu.com but 
every day I'm for an entire month I'm gonna pick something that I'm going to just spend 20 minutes on each day that's just for me mm -hmm. and at the end of January if I feel like it's time for that thing to change and be something else then awesome uh, but if I want it to be the same then great I'll do that for another month of 20 minute things mm -hmm. so for the month of January I wanted to get back into my spinning and I hadn't worked on any of my drop spindling at all and I realized when I started looking back I hadn't actually touched it for a year which is really sad because I love it. It's so soothing. I have so much fun doing it. So instead of picking up some current braids that I had hanging out, I decided I was just going to start fresh and I would open up a brand new one with a fiber that I'd never done before. And I'm using Yarn Love. And it looked more beautiful than this <laughs> when it was all braided up the right way. And it is the Juliet Roving, 75% merino, 15% nylon. There's about four ounces, and the colorway is scintillating sari. And they had it braided so nicely, but I, I have found that for me, I like to be able to just pull from my little section and then rip this off. Like what I would do is take out this much, and then I would rip this chunk out. And after I rip that chunk out, I divide it all up into little strips that are manageable for me. And I usually get about six of these little strips. And they tend to naturally divide themselves. It's really not hard. And then it's manageable for me to just spin off of one. It's kind of like working on a roll lag because it's just a perfect manageable size. So since January 1st, you can see, so here's my first little turtle, and it looks terrible because I wasn't wrapping it very nicely or anything. I, it's funny when you start, you can see yourself getting back into the groove of things mm -hmm. because here's my second turtle, and it looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference between the two. You can see the difference in the consistency. Like mm -hmm. So that was the first little pink section that I came to. I'm now working on the green and white mm -hmm. section. I love it. I love it a lot. And I don't know if you guys have ever worked on a Turkish drop spindle, but I think for me this is like one of my favorite... Um, spindles to work on because it just spins so easily and I just I love it so I can spin from the top or from the bottom and it just drafts beautifully I'm sure that part of this is the merino that's happening but then when you go to wrap it you go over two of the legs and under one and then over two under one over two, under one, and you do that the entire way around. And that's what makes that really fun design. So and then you just uh, hitch it back up there and give yourself enough space to do that, I guess. And then you're ready to go again. So I've been working on that for 20 minutes a day. I'm probably not going to get through my entire braid in the month of January. There's a possibility I might, but I am enjoying just the aspect of getting some of it done and it's just for me like there's no reason for it I have no plans for it right now but I think I I think I'm gonna ply this I think I'm going to chain ply it or Navajo ply it at the end when it's all said and done so that way I can kind of keep the sections like do a green section and then a pink section and go on from there but that's kind of the one thing that I've been working on daily for me each week. And then the last thing is I need to give you an official review finally on this. A few weeks ago, a few episodes ago, I had mentioned that I had received this awesome lotion bar from Love and Leche. They are formerly known as Milk and Honey. They're located in New Mexico. 
it's a hundred percent all natural uh, all natural ingredients there we are that was the word I was looking for and it is fantastic I got a two and a half ounce container I use this bar every day and I'm not even exaggerating and I still have a ton this is the citrus rose scent it is probably not the scent that I would have if I was ordering online that I would have purchased for myself mm -hmm. but I love citrus mm -hmm. so I might have but this is amazing to me mm -hmm. it's very nice it's very very fragrant mm -hmm. which but not fragrant in a, oh my gosh, that smells No, strong like, it's way. like the perfect one. Because mm -hmm. I've gotten some lotion bars where you can't smell it. Like, after you put it on your hands, I don't smell much of anything anymore. But this, I still smell, and it just mm -hmm. leaves a very beautiful scent. Mm -hmm. The best part about this is that, let's see, when I was reading the back of it, I I loved the fact that it's not just for your hands because the back of the tin says enjoy the sensual pleasure of rubbing our lotion bar to soothe rough hands and feet chapped lips painful split fingers and more as you massage the bar between your hands your body temperature will melt and soften the oils and beeswax allowing your skin to replenish and deeply moisturize Oh, to be replenished and deeply moisturized. The ingredients are uh, very basic, um, but very good for you ingredients. There's beeswax, coconut oil, almond oil, uh, and other essential oils, and organically certified candula flowers. So if, you know, for whatever reason, if you are allergic to that, that's the ingredients, that's it. Mm -hmm. I, which is perfect and it's the perfect consistency for me. I highly, highly recommend these lotion bars. I'm not paid to say that. I, I know that they were sent to me to review, but this is my honest opinion. It's loveandleche.com is where you can find them and I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. No. They're awesome. Okay. So, yeah. Do you have a question? No, I have to think of one because I don't know what I did with my notebook at the moment. So, okay. so mine's actually a two-part question. So part one is, if you could meet any knitwear designer, who would it be? And part two is, if you could collaborate on a pattern with any knitwear designer, who would it be? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if I could collaborate with a pattern, I would choose one of three designers because their style is very similar to what I wear all of the time. I I don't think I can narrow it down to one. Okay. I would choose either Hannah Fettig, mm -hmm. Shannon Cook, mm -hmm. or Joji Locatelli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though they they design stuff that I like, that is what I go to the store and buy for my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Everything. And those are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards wanting to knit. Right. That would be it. So you would collaborate on a pattern with them? Yeah, I would love to. That would be cool. It would be very cool. And in the same respect, like, I would love to meet them, but the one designer that I would love to meet truly... Is, is between two people. I would love to meet Susan B. Anderson mm -hmm. because I need to see the woman who can whip out a pair of socks like faster than I so than I can snap my fingers. <laughs> and she is so sweet and I love her podcast and I just I enjoy her. Mm -hmm. And she just has this sweet personality. So her or Stephen West <laughs> because I think he's just a genius. Yeah. Like I don't think I have I, I just love him. Yes. I do. Like, <laughs> I just love him. Yes. Yep. Oh, he's amazing. Yes. So those are 
backwards. Those are my answers. Those are good answers. Yeah. What would you... Um, so my meeting the same person. I, I would love to meet Stephen West just because I think he is genius and it would be amazing to sit down and talk to him and kind of get to see like one-on-one -on -one how his brain works. Cause you look at his patterns and you just, you have to know that he had some very supportive parents because he had to have been able to be creative but really good at math. <laughs> like, there is some serious math that goes on in his head and some serious genius as far as his designs and the way he constructs things. And I think meeting him would be awesome, but he, he's just such a fun person and he's quirky and his, yeah, I just love his personality. I love his podcast. He's hysterical. He is. He is so funny. Yeah. So I think just hanging out with him in general would just be a lot of fun. And then... For me, if I could collaborate with any designer, it would have to be Jane Richmond. See, I, love I adore too. her. I love her patterns. We actually saw her at Vogue Knitting two years ago, and it was like, that's Jane Richmond. I it know. took me a minute to, I'm like, I know who that is, and then But both it of us were, like, too intimidated we were, to we say didn't go hi. Say anything, and I wish we would have, because... <laughs> I know. She, and she's, you guys, because she looks tiny in her pictures on her patterns. She's a teeny tiny little person in person. She's, she's short tiny. and little petite. She's just super cute. I would love to collaborate with her, because I, I love all of she's her patterns. I've knit one. three of her patterns now, and I've loved all of them. Yeah, she's another one that I have a lot of... Mm -hmm. I think what I love about her is that she can make a pattern look so intricate and when it comes down to it it's really very simple and I love that I love that her pattern is easy and just like a go-to knitting thing and yet looks so involved yeah me too so that would be my answer